for media. Blockchain news, crypto crews and interviews. Keeping you tuned in to the ecosystem. Hello and welcome to Core Radio. Tonight, Friday night, and just got out of work. And uh, I had an interesting uh, proposal here. I, I, I looked into this this new coin. Uh, it's called Game Credits. So it, I like already the fact that it doesn't sound like a coin. It sounds like a credit, like you get on your credit card. Or a credit you get from a store, right? So that, that's that's very that's very friendly. Uh, this is game credits, and uh, I I called upon someone named John to come on and introduce us to game credits and see what it's about. There's a lot of talk about it, and uh, if you're a gamer like I am, you know I love World of Warcraft. You know I, I got a years and a half of play time in there. If I if I do the play time in the in the in the little prompt over there, it'll tell me I, I've played over a year. It's ridiculous. I can't even believe I played that much. But uh, uh, I'd like everyone to welcome John. Hey, John, what's going on? Hey, Lutz, how you doing? All right, hanging in there, a little to the left. <laughs> you should get in there and uh, play again, man. All those war World of Warcrafters are waiting for you to get back in the game. Uh, man, I'm dedicated to crypto now. I'm dedicated. <laughs> My game is now crypto. You've gone down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I have, I have. But you know, one day I'll lighten up. You know, maybe one day I'll be able to do this as my full time job. You know, and, and not have to actually go to a corporate environment every day. And well, uh, playing play in crypto way. is kind of like playing in the game. I think it's like a big game. <laughs> it is. It is a big game. You know, there's all there's all these weapons. You know, <laughs> that's, that's got, true. We got game credits now. It's like the the, the <laughs> sword, the sword of all swords. You know, you got, you got your shield of waves. You, know, you got your, you got your Komodo dragon suit going on. That's right. I'm, I'm just I'm just becoming better and better. Level you got to level up though. I I'm, I I well when I left I was full level man. I was I was raiding and all. I, I had my own I had my own. Uh, my own team, you know, what, what are they called? Uh, I don't, I, that's how long it's been. I, my own... Guild? Guild, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I had my yeah. own guild at one point. My cousin was the leader. I was I was managing the raids, you know. And then they, <laughs> they, you know what was a pain in the ass? They, then you had people, like, like you know, getting in fights with each other, and you had to, like, dispute it, you know. And <laughs> yep. put one, one child is in his corner, and the other child in the other corner. No. Nope. You two need to get along. <laughs> Tell me, how do you feel? You know, I felt like a psychologist. Well, thanks for having me on. Hey, welcome. Welcome on to uh, Core Radio. I'm a little tired at the moment, so excuse me if uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sounding a little lax. You know, if you fall asleep, I'll just, I'll just continue as if you were here. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm <laughs> sure you, were you were telling me earlier, man. I could, I could, uh, you were talking and talking. I couldn't even get like a word in. <laughs> But that's good because it sounds like you're really enthusiastic about game credits, and you know every coin needs a really enthusiastic person behind it. Are are you the the CEO behind it? Are I'm actually more people? I'm actually uh, my official title is CMO, Chief Marketing Officer. So we have uh, if you go if you go to or your users go to GameCredits.com, the the whole uh, team is on there, so you can see all the different people and a little bit about their backgrounds and. And uh, their experience, both in uh, we have people experts both in crypto and a lot of experts from the gaming industry as well. So it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty powerful team with a lot of experience. Cool. So so uh, what other type of people are on the team with you? Well, our uh, our chief technical uh, developer uh, is. Um, or I should say, actually, our vice president of development is uh, Sergey Shalom. Uh, Sergey is actually uh, also CEO of Datecroft. Um, so you can go to GameCredits.com uh, or you can go to Datecroft.com. Datecroft is spelled D-A-T-C-R-O-F-T. -T. Uh, but Datecroft is a, is a very successful gaming company. Um, they've been in, around for about 13 years. Uh, they have uh, six games and 
they have about 14 million registered users who play their games. So they've done quite well. And, uh, and Sergey uh, came on board with Game Credits uh, in 2016 because he had been working on some new uh, uh, platforms and technologies. Uh, and he was interested in crypto, but uh, he had looked at Bitcoin um, and considered Bitcoin, but said, you know what? Uh, it doesn't really have a lot. I mean, he could, he could it's better if he tells the story, but the way he told the story several times around me was that he looked at Bitcoin and said, I can bring Bitcoin on and use it as a payment solution, but none of my gamers are ever going to use it because they don't know what Bitcoin is and they don't know how to get Bitcoin. Uh, so it's only going to confuse my uh, user's experience. So there's no reason to use uh, Bitcoin, but he loved the idea of uh, cryptocurrency, the speed of it, the anonymity of it. The fact that you can move a lot of money for a little bit or almost no cost. Um, he also liked the idea of being able to uh, have game developers like himself have more control over their economies because uh, a lot of game developers right now, if they go on to uh, Steam or they go on to uh, uh, the iTunes Store or they go on to Google Play, uh, they have to pay. Uh, 20 to 30 percent commissions. Uh, they have to wait up to 60 days to get payouts. Um, for a lot of developers who maybe aren't larger developers, they have to wait several weeks or sometimes months even to be listed on the platforms. And then because there's so many about hundreds of thousands of games on those platforms now, um, it's hard to even get any type of exposure um, even once you get your game on there. So developers are facing uh, a lot of challenges and he saw that uh, crypto could uh, potentially solve those. But it wasn't until he kind of met our team with game credits and we had been working on similar symbiotic technologies uh, that we wanted to introduce to the gaming industry. And so we kind of had a marriage in 2016 where we brought uh, our crypto team and we... Did I time out? No, no, you're good, man. I just closed the, the <laughs> I just closed I just closed one of the computers because it was making a lot of noise. Okay, well, I'll just finish, I'll start back my last sentence. So basically, we uh, had a marriage of uh, our crypto team with Game Credits, uh, and we kind of married with uh, Sergey and his team with Daycroft, and so now it's all under the Game Credits umbrella, but the uh, development is actually being done by the game developing company and not the crypto company. Uh, and I think that's a pretty important distinction because I think there's a lot of crypto projects and a lot of them, and, and look, I've been a supporter of several different communities um, and uh, I'm not uh, I'm just only with game. I mean, game's the only one I have felt confident enough to put my own personal name behind. But, uh, one of the big challenges that I've seen over and over in crypto projects is that development is taking place uh, in the crypto space and they're trying to solve issues in, say, mainstream uh, business space, but they don't necessarily have experience in that space. And so um, I think that the best way to penetrate a market is if you have leaders in that market developing for you. Um, and so that's that's what we have. And so. Uh, it's been a two-year process now of this development, and uh, we're going to be launching uh, our payment solution for the gaming industry uh, starting uh, December seventh of this year. So just in just in a few days. All right. Uh, so GameCredits.com. That's the website, and yeah. it, it's a pretty sexy looking website. Um, so so you're going to target. A, this, so what I've noticed is a lot of good stuff coming out these days. You got Insane doing incentive, the, the incentive niche, right, yep. for, for customers. And you have uh, MVP lineup doing uh, fantasy sports, right? And, and you got, and, and now you have you, uh, you know, where you're doing the, the gaming side of it. They're all niches. We're, I think we're taking over niches little by little, you know, like one niche at a time. We're going to conquer it all. Uh, that could be my new slogan. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> one niche, one niche at a time. I like that. 
It was well. That's what it looks like, right? Where everyone's taking their their niche and then they make it. They're trying to no, make I it agree. work. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's uh, kind of the next step for crypto is to fo you know, to focus on specific use cases. Well, the, the, um, not... the next the next step is is getting the normal developers to start getting used to developing with blockchain, and that's kind of like what you did here. You got yeah. you got regular gamer developers, which you know some of the best developers in the world come from gaming companies. Yes, it's it's true. I think uh, the one that did uh, uh, I forgot. So the the, the one that did uh, what, what's that? What's that crazy game? Where where you uh, where where you're on the street shooting everybody and you can jump jump in any car you want. Are you talking about uh, Grand uh, uh, Grand, um, Theft Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft Auto, right? Yeah, the, the 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 developer of that that guy, he's a hacker at heart. I, I saw an interview at him, and he's he's amazing. He created a decentralized type of uh, file sharing that is a hundred percent encrypted and. Uh, it's it's really amazing, you know. So so the best developers do come from the gaming world. Uh, yep. You you have different types of games over here. Uh, are these games where, where are these games located? If people wanted to play it. Well, you know, we're going to go to mass market. Um, before we go to mass market, uh, we're doing a private. I call it a private beta because that's basically what it is. Um, a private beta in Datecroft's game. So Datecroft has six games. They have about 14 million registered users in their games. Their largest game is called Fragoria, and it's kind of like a Slavic uh, World of Warcraft. Um, it's got 8 million registered users. Uh, it's been around for seven years. Uh, they have all types of things like guilds, and actually uh, they have, you can have, uh, they have a lot of players who do uh, by countries, so different countries compete with each other. There's a lot of type of team and guild uh, play in that in that gaming experience. Uh, but on December seventh, that's going to be the first game that we're going to be test piloting our payment solution inside of. And if it's okay, I'll just talk for a second about yeah, kind of it. our overall approach because we're looking at mass market adoption. Now the thing is that. There's a lot of crypto people who play games, like you and I, uh, and certainly uh, a lot of those crypto people have been looking for ways to spend their crypto in games, and we're going to allow that to happen. But uh, our main long-term focus are going to be gamers who know nothing about crypto, because 99% of gamers, they go and they play their games, um, and they don't, they don't know what crypto is, and, and they don't care. They just want to play their game they want to get as much as they can for as little bit as possible, and they want to have as exciting uh, an experience as possible. So what we realized is that uh, there are problems right now for gaming developers. I mentioned some of them. Uh, the cost to be on platforms, uh, the delays and being paid out, um, getting exposure, the expense of marketing, all of that. Um, and then there's certain, you know, ch things that gamers don't get to do either. It's like, uh, you know, one of the things that um, Sergey taught me was that a lot of people don't realize that games make a lot of their money from whales. So uh, just like crypto exchanges make a lot of their money from whales, it's the same in the gaming industry. There's some people that will pay literally hundreds of thousands of dollars a year uh, in gameplay. The problem is that... Uh, those players are having more and more and more difficulty being able to spend large amounts of money in games because of uh, the regulations uh, behind uh, spending uh, and uh, credit cards and banks and really limiting uh, what people can spend. So um, we're going to, with our solution, going to allow people to be able to spend as much money as they want. Uh, obviously, with crypto, uh, there's a certain amount of anonymity uh, that you're going to be able to have. A lot of players don't want to be able to enter all their personal credit card information uh, and things of that nature. Um, the, uh, the other thing uh, that uh, we're going to be really focused on in the, in the private beta is incentivizing gamers to use game credits because we realized, just like I mentioned, uh, that Sergey had known about Bitcoin and didn't really see a value of, uh, of adding it because he didn't think it added any value to his players. 
Uh, with game credits, we're actually going to be incentivizing gamers uh, to use game credits. So I'll give you an example of how that's going to work. Uh, gamers are going to be able to go into Fregoria, they'll be playing the game, uh, and they'll go and they'll compete, complete a task or a challenge or a quest, and instead of winning Fregoria gold, uh, they'll get a coupon uh, for game credits. And then uh, they'll be able to say they want a dollar or two dollars worth of game credits that they can use to buy more Fregoria gold. And to do that, then they'll have to go uh, to their wallet and be able to and redeem it in their wallet. And uh, we're going to get them interacting with the cryptocurrency without ever telling them that it's a cryptocurrency. So our goal is for gamers to use game credits, use cryptocurrency as a way to get more value in uh, purchasing. And if we can show them, hey, you can get a discount for using game credits versus using your credit card or using PayPal or using something like that, um, then we can make it a lot more attractive for gamers. Because at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't matter how many solutions we create for game developers if the game gamers aren't actually using uh, game credits. And so our system is going to be highly uh, focused on incentivizing game players and ga uh, excuse me, gamers. And there's going to be a lot of ways that we're going to do that. There's going to be a lot of split testing, a lot of different uh, things that we're going to look at as far as how uh, are the best ways that we can incentivize gamers to use to use our currency. All right. All right. I think uh, I think World of Warcraft actually uses the blockchain for its in in game gold, right? You know, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that, but uh, World of Warcraft is an example I love to talk to people about because you know, Bitcoin started in two thousand nine. And World of Warcraft Gold started long before that. And, uh, you know, there's secondary markets where you can sell your World of Warcraft Gold and, and uh, players trade it back and forth. I and, used to buy uh, gold all the time. Yeah. yeah. It became like its own secondary <laughs> economy. Like, especially, I know the Chinese were huge as far as, like, uh, reselling gold. And that was long before Bitcoin even existed. And so this is... Like I, way I look at World of Warcraft is kind of like a, already a, a case study, a use study for, for what crypto can do. Now, the disadvantage to that in a World of Warcraft is that it was still a closed economy. You know, you could have a secondary market for it, but you couldn't take your World of Warcraft gold and cash it out and then, or, or take it and transfer it into a def another game and use it in the other game. And that's kind of what we're going to be able to do. So uh, it's going to allow players to move game credits from one game, cash out of that, move it over to another game. Uh, gamers are going to have the flexibility then to start to control uh, their economy, uh, have more spending options. Because, you know, right now, if we go into a game and we spend money in that game, um, that money stays there. We don't get to take it, you know, take what we didn't use and take it out and use it somewhere else. Uh, but those are the type of things we're going to allow gamers to do. Um, and, you know, it's just a matter of really introducing them to it and incentivizing them to use it. Um, <clears throat> so, and so, then what, so what yeah, platform will these games be playing on? Do I, do I play them on my computer? Like World of Warcraft? Yeah, so it depends on the game. You know, the, the gaming market is basically divided into two parts. There's the web PC games. You know, people play it on the web, on their computer. And then there's the mobile market. And they're two really totally different markets. Um, the reason being because web, like, web is hosted on the internet where, and servers. And then mobile platform is hosted on... Uh, it's on it's apps on the phone, but it's got to be hosted with servers as well. So you have things like Google Play and Apple that host everything uh, for the developers. So we're going to be we're going to be targeting both markets. Um, Fregoria, the first game is a web PC based game, um, and so the results that we get in that game, that we're going to market those results, show that as a use uh, case study uh, to developers who do web PC games. Uh, the first uh, quarter of 2017, uh, we're going to be uh, launching some pretty exciting things in the mobile market. I can't, unfortunately, uh, 
those announcements are probably going to be made in a couple of weeks, so I can't talk about it. But we are going to be going after the mobile market uh, in a big way. Um, and we have a lot of developers uh, and hundreds of games already signed up uh, in that project. Um, and those will be all mobile games. So, you know, in 2017, people will, will be able to use game credits both on mobile games and in web and PC games. All right. Um, if somebody wanted to buy game credits to, say, buy gold, right? Or, you know, use game credits to, to buy the Sword of a Thousand Troops. Yeah. How, how would they do that? Well, we've created, uh, we've created a, a wallet that we're going to, uh, people will be able to, to test uh, on the 7th of December, but we've created a wallet um, that is basically seamless. So what we, what we didn't want to do is make it the gaming experience, or say for instance, if a gamer logs on to their game and they want to deposit money uh, so they can buy something in the game. We didn't want to slow that down, complicate that. We didn't want to make them have to go somewhere else to get their game credits and then bring their game credits back into the game. Uh, we didn't want to do that because, again, we are going after gamers who know nothing about crypto, and we don't want to disrupt anything that they're accustomed to seeing. So what's going to happen is our wallet is going to be in the same payment uh, page um, that they see already in their gaming experience. So when they go, they'll have a choice, uh, PayPal, credit card, or game credits. And if they want to buy game credits, then they can use, uh, um, a ver it'll be a variety of things. It'll be credit card, PayPal, maybe local payment methods, depending on where they live in the world. Um, we want the, them to have all the different options and then they'll be able to buy those game credits right there on the spot within their game and then they'll be able to use the game credits to buy their sword or their gold or whatever thing that they want right there immediately. So, so, so the wallet's right inside the game? Yep, exactly. Got it. it will there be mining? What, what kind of coin is this? Uh, you know, on a side note. What kind of blockchain is this? Is this proof of stake, proof of work? Is it all mined out already? Um, yeah, game credit. Game credits is three years old. Um, it's a proof of work. Um, it's not mined out. The mining hash rate has been going up significantly over the last uh, year, especially the last six months. Um, there's going to be. It's uh, similar to Litecoin in that there's going to be 84 million uh, coins mined uh, in in totality. Uh, but I think today there's, yeah, same forever. Then, what? Same algorithm as Litecoin? Yeah, it's similar with, with some, yeah, it's a script algorithm um, with, with some minor changes. But yes, so it's script and then therefore it's easier to, to mine. You don't have to worry too as much about uh, large ASICs controlling the market. It's pretty well distributed right now. And we have uh, quite a number of mining pools. If you go to uh, our Bitcoin talk thread, um, we have a list of all the different mining pools. It's, I don't know, the 12 or 15 different mining pools right now that people can join if they want to mine game. Nice. All right, guys, get mining. You can profit later on. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, uh, I'm not a miner myself, but uh, um, the feedback I've gotten from miners is that right now it's, uh, Game Credits has been very profitable to mine and still is, um, even though uh, our market cap's been pretty impressive um or i should say i'm mean, gonna say impressive but it's been been very stable uh today i think we're the 20th largest market cap um looking at coin market cap at 12 million three hundred thousand market cap uh and there's 59 million game that exists today uh and uh there was actually i would encourage people to go look at our blog if you go to gamecredits.com and you look at our blog, there was a recent blog posted on there uh, actually last week. And there's a third party site that had done an interesting research about all the different altcoins compared to Bitcoin. And did they, they were trying to figure out do altcoins per perform better than Bitcoin or not? And they graphed that out, every one of them. 
And every one of them, when they grafted out the growth rate from inception to all, had, had, un had under growth rate from Bitcoin's inception to now, except for one. And the only outlier of the uh, 800 coins or whatever they did the, did the graph on was game. Uh, since game has come into existence, uh, we've actually been the only coin that has grown uh, at an exponential rate faster than Bitcoin has since its inception. So it's pretty nice. We, we've, we've made uh, in, in our community, it's, uh, we've really made an effort not to hype anything, to try to give, uh, to, to, to try to fall through on all our promises. Um, and uh, to only deliver what we say we're going to deliver and, and, and we work really hard to deliver on time and uh, what ha what's happened is it's been a very very steady growth um, and there hasn't been a lot of severe ups and downs and there hasn't really been a bear market uh, in in uh, in our entire history if you look at the chart so so as far as like a long-term investment it's been it's been a really good long-term investment and uh, that's the way we kind of look at it. Uh, I would encourage people if they wanted to get some game to get it and hold on to it, uh, but not looking to uh, to pump and dump because that 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 probably isn't going to work too well uh, uh, in our in, with our with our project. All right, uh, these type of games they look like they they cater more to the younger the youth. Is that what kind of marketing uh, you know? Promotions are you are you looking towards? Or what kind of marketing are you looking to do, or is there any marketing at all that will be done in the future to get kids interested? You know, like uh, like Keebler elves. You know, they have the little elves and kids yeah. see the elves and they go, "Oh, mommy, yeah. I want those cookies." You know. Mm -hmm. is it, well, are, are you going to have your own Keebler elf for, to attract kids? Or? We certainly are, and uh, I wish I could. There's a lot of plans as far as marketing uh, uh, with our mobile, our mobile expansion. Again, I can't really go into that. I wish I could. Maybe we could do an interview in a couple of weeks and we can just talk about mobile. Um, but yes, the answer is absolutely. We're going to market, uh, and we plan on sp spending a, uh, quite a bit of money, millions of dollars, doing so uh, in the in the mobile industry. Um, and with the uh, web and PC, um, which I can talk more about right now. Um, we are going to market, um, but we're going to be marketing uh, first and foremost to gaming developers. So Sergey and his team, their whole goal with this, with this testing uh, game credits and this payment solution in their games is to show uh, the results, like all the different positive results from that, that they experienced as a game developer, because that's what they are. And then once they have those that testing done, once they show, hey, these are all the advantages we're getting from using this already, they're going to go to their thousands of contacts in the gaming industry because they have a very strong uh, reputation in the gaming industry. And they're going to just lay it out. And a lot of these discussions have already taken place, but the bottom line is that these other companies want to see results. So they're going to make, we're going to create the results. And then they're going to take those results and, and, and market directly to the, the gaming industry uh, to the developers. Because first and foremost, we have to get the developers to sign on, which we feel very confident that they will based on our preliminary conversations with them. And once we get the developers signed on, then we're going to work in conjunction with those developers uh, to market uh, to their game, uh, to their gamers. So we're going to go uh, uh, direct to the industry, direct to the game developers and the gamers that are already playing um, to, uh, to penetrate the market. Um, and so there's a lot that we feel like we can do internally as far as web and PC uh, and really just kind of win over the existing user base um, slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, and eventually our goal is to convert, you know, uh, at least some of these gamers into crypto enthusiasts. We, we, we believe, I mean, you know, probably know this very well from World, World of Warcraft, but gamers are very savvy. They're always looking for an edge. Uh, they're always looking for a hack. They're always looking for a way to make more money. So we feel like that they're going to love crypto once they understand it, once they get the advantages from it. 
Um, and so our goal is eventually win them over. But with, uh, with the WebPC, we're going to go direct to developers. And then with mobile, we're going to be doing more traditional uh, and some non-traditional advertising methods, uh, which I can talk about in a couple of weeks. I have a great idea. Okay. How about you tell the kids that mining is really like farming? You know the way you used to farm for gold. Yeah. You know, and they could they could all set up mining with their computers, and you'll have thousands of kids mining, and that will create a more secure network, and that'll get them into blockchain at a young age. I I have to say, Lutz, that this is an exactly an idea we have on our roadmap. Um, it's I mean, exactly I got... what it's an exact <laughs> idea we have on a roadmap. If it's not our first priority, but like absolutely, I think that once we do some market penetration, it's a no-brainer uh, because we we could see that as a way to encourage gamers to you know look you know they can make more they can create their own money and we think they'll be very excited about that idea. Yeah, they'll they'll secure the network. Mining that'll be that'll be awesome. I mean, you know, I'll even do it to buy the sword of a thousand two. And because of the script algorithm, they'll be able to do it right from their computer. The only other person I know that has the sword of a thousand troops is, is Bob from accounting. What's that? The only <laughs> the, the only person I know that has that sword is Bob in accounting. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh. That yeah, I mean, I could picture kids like you know mining with their parents' computers, you know. And yep. Mom, you can't shut the computer off. <laughs> right. You know, it's mine. I'm farming. <laughs> you know, and the, the funny thing, you're laughing, but this is so true, and and that's part of our plan. And and you know, I look at it and go, you know, crypto people. That, to me, if I look at all the projects out there on the crypto landscape. The one that's the lowest hanging fruit, the one that like seems to be as, the most similar to crypto people and the crypto community are gamers. I mean, and uh, I, think, I think it will be the easiest type of person to convert to crypto uh, once you show them the value. Well, and that's the, the key. That's I, the think, key. I think also a, a very common denominator between the two is the fact that gamers always have great game cards in their computers. Yep. And then, and then once they figure out that they're awesome, you know, our Radeon or whatever they're using, R9, uh, right. what is it, 420 now, 430, it's, it's a lot more than what I used to use. Yeah. And I mean, once they figure out they could be mining like pretty badass with their, uh -huh. with their awesome card, you know, they're just going to leave that thing on 24 seven and they're going to be right. securing the network. And, and that's the common denominator. They, you know, they already have the great graphics cards, most of them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy you came on to tell me about this. I had no idea, honestly. I had no idea before you told me. Well, it's interesting because even though we've been around for a while, we've really flown under the radar. You know, I, I was at a Coin Agenda. Uh, Bitcoin conference during Money 2020 a couple of weeks ago in Vegas, and we did three presentations there and a couple of panels, and really no one, no one had heard of us because you know it's it's right now there's a landscape of like ICO mania and you know all these all these exciting shiny slick yeah. ideas and that's that's great but like you know we're kind of old school you know people looked at us and said well where where's your new coin and i was like well it's, it's, it's kind of been around for a while you know it's kind of like we're we're kind of old school crypto guys um and uh and so yeah we've kind of flown under the radar but um i age, think once age, you, know, you and other people difference. say what age makes a big difference you know in the, in the crypto space i mean you yeah. One of the reasons why most coins can't be like Bitcoin is because Bitcoin has a seven-year lead on them. That's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, I think when people, more people like yourself uh, and other people read more about us, I think the, uh, the, the excitement level will be ratcheted up. But at the, but at the end of the day, we know uh, the burden is on us to show people that uh, this works and can work. And I think, you know, also it's like I think there's a lot of people – in the crypto space and maybe become a little bit, I don't want to say jaded, 
but I think people have come to expect things not to happen. Like people expect things to sound exciting and to launch with a lot of fanfare, but not necessarily deliver some awesome thing at the end of the day. And so they kind of move from one project to the other, to the other, whatever's hot now, they move on to the next thing that's hot. Um, and you know, we're really, our whole focus has always been mainstream adoption, mainstream adoption. But to do that, you have to have experts in that industry and you have to put in a lot of sweat, blood and tears. And, you know, that's what we've done. And we're just going to continue to do that. But uh, yeah, I would encourage people, yeah, please go to our website, go to our Bitcoin talk thread. Ask us questions, dig deep, because uh, the digger, uh, more the, the deeper people dig, uh, I found the more uh, excited and surprised uh, they become about what we're actually doing and what we've already done. All right. Well, I'm excited. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> I you know, I, I'm maybe that's just a little kid gamer in me, really. You know, you, know you, you really think I want to work every day? I would love to be playing World of Warcraft right now. <laughs> but you know, I can't That's do great. it. You know, my, my well, you should, you should join. You should, sign, I know you're a real busy guy, uh, but you should uh, sign on to our Slack channel. I'd love to introduce you to Sergey. You know, Sergey before he started his. Uh, this is on his bio on the website. You can read about it. But before Sergey started the Daycroft, uh, the gaming company, uh, he was uh, he was getting a PhD in uh, in uh, mathematical modeling. He was actually a rocket scientist, <laughs> and. And uh, but he was still a kid. He was like in you know graduate school, and him and his twin brother uh, actually uh, became like kind of pseudo celebrity gamers in in uh, in Russia because I forget which game it was that they played, but they got really good uh, like tournament gaming, and they loved gaming so much that you know they basically were like you know I can't I can't be a rocket scientist. I need to go and do what I love, and they started their own gaming company. So. So he's kind of like, you know, he's he's a, he's a gamer at heart, uh, not just a guy who's been trying to make a buck in the industry. So uh, I'd love to introduce you guys. I think you guys would hit it off and have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Sorry, baby, but I can't be a rocket scientist the way you want me to be. You know, so <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play some video games and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go cook me some eggs. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> You lazy son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, baby, my, pretty good for baby, my heart is into gaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that just wouldn't fly, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, man. That's it. Hey, listen, I, I'm happy you came on, John. And uh, we we definitely went over the 30 minute time span, but I would I would love to have you back uh, when you have more updates and about that. Uh, what is it? An app, iPhone game? Yeah, we're uh, yeah we're going to be doing a lot of things in the mobile market. So maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, we can come back on and I can share with you that news when I'm allowed to. Uh, all right, I see. Oh, I see. You got you got the wife over. You can't play anymore. I understand. All right, cool. But, uh, all right, John. Thanks right. so much. What 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 website is uh, GameCredits.com? Is there any other sites that people need to know about? Go to GameCredits.com and also go to our Bitcoin talk thread and on there you can sign up for Slack. Uh, we have a very active Slack channel. Uh, you can uh, join, our, join uh, our Twitter and our Facebook feeds. We're constantly giving out information. And also on our GameCredits.com website you can sign up for our newsletter and we send out updates uh, via email every week. So there's a lot of different ways to engage. All right. Well, there it is, folks. Another niche getting conquered. Uh, mostly towards uh, children who play games like me, because I'm just a big child. <laughs> and, uh, you know, another here's another niche getting taken over. They're going to be playing video games. They won't even know they're using the blockchain, which is the whole point of getting them to use it. Because if you tell them all about blockchain, they're just going to look at you like you've got three heads on your shoulders. Like, That's uh, right. Yeah, they, they look at you like, like they look at the, when I try to explain it to my family, they're like, yeah, you know, I invested in Bitcoin and, you know, I'm. I'm I'm up three times right now, you know. Like, what the hell is Bitcoin? And there's no way I'm explaining blockchains and and the distributed ledgers. So that's not happening. They well, it's a bit of pleasure, Luke. <laughs> they can't even move a mouse. There's no way they're gonna understand any of that stuff. Oh, that's so true. 
All right, man. All right. Thanks for coming on. Stick around. I'll, I'll be right back. And everybody, uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, tomorrow we will have Saya Coin on with uh, Kiari. And he's going to give us the updates on their latest uh, market, in, in-house market. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not sure if it's actually, uh, you know, distributed or not. Uh, but I don't know, we'll, we'll let them give us the information because I don't want to say anything wrong. All right, guys, enjoy the night. This is Roots and John from Game Credits signing off. Take care. Bye.